All right. Hi, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. I know this is an international conference. I'm very happy to be here. I'm here to talk about Home Assistant and talk about the technology that my family can't live without, which is Home Assistant. Uh, my name is Marlon Buchanan. So today what I'll cover is a little bit of background about me, uh, basically why should you even listen to me? I'll talk about that for a little bit. Um, then I'll talk about my family's Home Assistant use. Um, and I'll do that in a day in the life format of my family using Home Assistant. So I'll kind of walk through what could happen in a day. And I, I can guarantee you that all the things do happen, but they don't necessarily happen in a given day, but they're all things do happen. So I'll walk through a day in the life and I'll talk about uh, my key Home Assistant integrations, my key Home Assistant automations, and what parts of Home Assistant my family uses the most. All right, so let's get started. A little background, a little bit about me. Uh, my day job, I'm an IT director at the University of Washington's Continuing College here in Seattle. Um, but my side gig, which is more relevant to this conversation, is that I run the Home Tech Hacker blog, where I do a lot of tutorials and re product reviews and a lot of things around smart homes, and especially Home Assistant. And I'm the author of a book called The Smart Home Manual, which helps people plan and set up and, and configure their smart homes. I do have a software development background, but I don't code professionally. I wouldn't call myself software developer anymore. It's been about 20 years, but I've been dabbling in smart home technology for 15 years. All right, so our home assistant powered smart home. Uh, we've been using home assistant for about two years. We have over a hundred small smart devices in our house, um, including switches and bulbs and plugs, uh, voice assistants, sensors, LED controllers, you name it. We've got, we got some version of it in the house. We run Home Assistant Core in a Python virtual environment using an Ubuntu virtual machine. There are four users in this house that complicate all of my automations. Uh, there's me, my wife, and my two sons, ages 10 and 13. So here's kind of a graphical layout of, of kind of how our system works. Um, the interface layer, most of the interface is using um, voice um, that isn't automated. So uh, either Amazon's assistant, I'll try not to trigger your uh, voice assistant, or Google Assistant and Home Assistant UI. Um, and we connect to those through Nabucasa, which if you aren't using, you definitely should be. It makes things a lot easier. Um, the automation integration engine is gonna be around the Z-Wave or Zigbee stick that we use. Obviously, Home Assistant has all the brains and logic and integration. And then we use a Sonoff RF transmitter receiver that's flashed with Tasmoda to control some radio frequency devices. Um, and then the devices are cloud. I have a few of those that are that integrate via the cloud um, because I couldn't find a local integration for them. Um, as I mentioned, we have RF devices, radio frequency. We have IP devices, which are usually controlled via a REST interface. There's Z-Wipe, and then there's my favorite, MQTT, and then we have Zigbee devices. All right. So let's talk about some of the things I control and monitor via Home Assistant. So there's the lights. Um, those are the different ways, different types of lights we have. We have ceiling fans, deadbolts, garage doors, thermostats, uh, occupancy sensors, uh, multi-sensors which do temperature, humidity, light, etc. cetera. Uh, I've clued our irrigation controller into Home Assistant, our home entertainment system, the AV uh, receivers and the uh, Roku and the TVs all, all integrate in, uh, alarm system, uh, robot vacuum and uh, our home energy monitor. And then we have our Google Home, and I didn't mention here, but we also have a couple of Echo Dots as well. So let's talk about it, a day in the life at our house. And I'm just gonna walk through moment by moment and kind of give you an idea of how a home assistant integrates into each of these moments and talk about the automations real quick. Um, all right, so in the morning, it's the coffee. It's 3.30 a.m. and there's no rain forecast for today or tomorrow. So Home Assistant knows based on logic to turn the sprinklers on. Now, I know there's at least a couple of you out there making a joke about no rain in the forecast in Seattle, but trust me, in the summers, there are days when there's no rain. Um, then around 5 a.m. we have the lights turn on and I could say Christmas lights, but we turned them on all year round with different themes. Different days had different things like Easter, 4th of July, sports teams. So I'm a, being in Seattle, I'm a big Seahawk fan. Seahawks play at about, oh, 20 minutes. And so all our lights around here are themed as Seahawk lights right now. Uh, 5.30 a.m., how cold did it get overnight? Well, if it got pretty cold, it's time to turn on the hydronic heating to get us to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And 6.15, when we start wrestling and getting out of our beds, um, if it's still not warm enough, we have another heating system that's heat pump that can heat a lot more quickly. That'll come on to make sure we get there pretty quickly at the same time, which is nice because those two systems don't talk to each other otherwise. Um, but Home Assistant allows us to have those totally integrated and work as one system. 
Then 6.30 a.m. comes in and the kids are ready to watch TV. So they could just say, turn on the, the TV and then it would turn on the receiver to the right input. It would turn the uh, Roku on and also put that on the right inputs as well and, and the AV receiver and then they all be good to go. We're still in the morning and it's seven o'clock now, but the hydronic system turns off because the house is warming up. And because they're integrated, once the hydronic system turns off, it knows to turn off the heat pump too, or the home system would just take care of that. And then at 7.30 a.m. it's sunrise, so it's time for the outdoor lights and LEDs to automatically turn off, which home system takes care of, no problem. Uh, we're all living in uh, COVID time, so a lot of us have our kids at home schooling virtually. So uh, a notification would come on at about 7.57 with a three minute warning that it's time for to start a school morning Zoom session. And it could turn the TV off automatically, turn the AV receiver off, and power the subwoofer down too if the kids happen to still have the TV on, which they should not have it any on anymore at that point. And the power in the subwoofer off is nice because I tried to go through my house and figure out what's using electricity for no reason, and the subwoofer was one of those things. So it only comes on when the AV receiver is on, and then the smart plug would turn it off as soon as the AV receiver is off so that there's no wasted energy usage there. Um, we try to get the kids to go outside every once in a while. So if at 1030, my son wanted to go out and play, he could just ask Google to open the garage door. And if he left it open in about 10 minutes, I would get an alert that the garage door has been open, um, which would be fine if he's out there playing. But it's also useful in case we forget and go somewhere and leave the garage door open. Uh, in the afternoon, it's 12. It's time for the kids lunch break. And this is one of their favorites that they like to use. They like to play Nintendo Switch. Um, it's connected to a projector, so they could just tell uh, the Google to turn on the Nintendo, and then that would turn on the receiver, the projector. It would also uh, dim the lights a little bit or turn them on. It's really dark in the basement. The projector is old and takes a few minutes to warm up. So this one's a really useful one, so you can tell it in a few minutes in advance, and then when you get down there, you can just start getting play, get to playing, which the kids get a little impatient with. So that one's nice. And then at 1 p.m., let's say I get an alert from the generator that the generator's running. Well, there's no need for alarm. It's just a weekly test. And uh, there's just a vibration sensor on there that tells me when the generator's running and when it's not. Um, then it's 3 p.m., and one of the kids decides to go outside and play and then forgets to close the door. Well, I get a notification that the door is left open, and then I could just go and close the door. The evening comes, and it's time for the lights to come on again, whatever the decorative lights of the day are. And then at 6 p.m. after dinner, we like to get together and get cozy and watch TV. Uh, once again, I could ask Google to just turn the TV on. And to make it cozy, I could also ask Google to turn the fireplace on. Now, after the fireplace has been on around, we'll say around 7.30, been on for a while, um, it might get a little warm in there. And there's a temperature sensor that would automatically turn the fireplace off for safety precautions and tell us that that's why it turned it off. So at 7.30, let's say it gets warm enough and it automatically turns the fireplace off. And then uh, if we want to further uh, annoy the kids, at 9 o'clock, we have the lights flash and tell them it's time to go to bed. And then their mobile devices would lock for the night, which they don't really like. And then their bedroom LED lights turn on, which they do like. There's uh, little addressable LED strips attached to each of the boys' beds, which acts as a nightlight. They have nice little designs that can come on, and then they, they automatically come on, and they're ready to go when they're, when they're going to bed. So uh, then it's 9.30 p.m., and then my wife and I, which were early beds, early um, we go to bed early and we head upstairs for bed. There's a little button we can press and it turns off all the lights on the main floor, turns on the lights that light a path going upstairs to our bedroom, and then it locks all the doors and it announces that it's done all this through the Google Home speaker. If we forgot to do that or we forgot to lock the doors, at 10.30 every day the door, deadbolts automatically lock just in case we forgot them. And then at 11 o'clock, since no one's up watching anything and no one's outside looking at things, we want to conserve a little energy the holiday lights and the themed LEDs turn off. And it'd be nice uh, if things are picked up around so they can run, then at 11.30 p.m. the robot vacuum can just go out and start doing a better job cleaning the floors than I ever do. So uh, I do have a couple of short demos that I'd like to show you real quick. Because um, it's kind of hard to demo um, smart home stuff without actually being in the smart home. So, But I did make a couple of different uh, videos that can show you a couple of different things. So here we go. And I have warning if uh, these are gonna, going to kick off a couple of commands to your assistant, so you may want to mute or just be prepared. Okay, you've been warned. Here they go. Hey, Google, turn on the fireplace. So I promise you there's nobody. Turn the fireplace 
going to the switch and hitting the switch after I said this. This is actual Google, automation, just using turn the fireplace off. Hey Google, turn on Nintendo. So this is the automation I talked about a little bit earlier. Turning on Nintendo. And sorry for the screen resolution there. And I'm gonna jump ahead in this video because like I said, it takes a couple of minutes. Again, I promise you I did not go and do things manually to make that happen. That's just to save you time, two minutes of watching the projector warm up and then you'll see Nintendo pop on. And then because they're lazy, hey, you can just Turn off Nintendo. Turn it off and everything goes back to the way it was. All right. So that is basically how a couple examples of how things work. Uh, just to go over a quick uh, couple of automations real quick. Um, of how things work in our house. So we have for security, which is actually the one of the big reasons I got into smart homes. We have an alarm.com integrated system with Home Assistant. And then we have that integrated with other motion sensors. The alarm triggers lights, so that's a nice uh, safety warning. And it also triggers a voice audible response from Google Home. I mentioned the smart deadbolts that automatically lock. They also tell us which code was used to come in in case we wanna give a guest code out or we wanna know which child entered a code. We have security light automations, which will basically emulate, when we put the house in away mode, it'll actually emulate different lights coming on at different times to, to, to kind of fake that we're home. And then it automatically turns off when we get back based on our presence, that automation turns off. And then we have panic buttons strategically placed throughout the house, which if you press, it'll send a text message to my wife and I telling the location that was pressed and that there's some type of distress. And then we have door, garage, and garage door and generator notifications. Um, the entertainment ones are basically all the receivers and subwoofers and TVs are controlled by Home Assistant. You can turn them all on, control them, uh, put control volume and put them on the right inputs from Home Assistant. So that makes you can write some pretty powerful automations that way. And almost all the LED lights are controlled, are powered by WLED and are controlled by Home Assistant, Christmas lights and all those other things. And then the comfort and convenience. So we've got the robot vacuum automation integrating the temperature system sensors and the two HVAC systems being home assistant, the fireplace automation, almost all light switches are either smart, motion activated or on timers. Most equipment is controllable by voice. The most difficult part there is naming things differently enough that the smart assistants can tell the difference. Um, then we have a power monitoring so we know how much how usage, how much electricity the house is using and then we have the irrigation control. So thank you. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me. Um, if you want to learn more, I have articles about how I did most of that on, on my blog at hometechhacker.com. And you can find me on Twitter um, a lot. And you can find me on Facebook a little. And you can find me on Discord a little bit too, which is also Home Tech Hacker. Um, again, thank you for your time. Have a good rest of your day, evening, or afternoon.